Hello, ceramic students. I want to take a minute here and talk about glazing. Um, this is a finished project that is bone dry, um, but I can't glaze it yet. So it has to be fired uh, one time in order for us to glaze it. So this here has been fired once. It's now called bisqueware. So you can see the difference in color, um, but also it's a lot stronger now. If I were to take this dry clay and put it into water, it would dissolve and disintegrate. And that's basically what glaze is, is your metals and your colors in water, suspended in water. Um, this has been fired to uh, 1828 degrees, um, but there's still some air between the clay particles so that it will absorb the glaze. And I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Um, and why do you want to glaze it? Because it makes it watertight, uh, it um, makes it look good, you get color choices. And so behind me here, I have the glaze wall, um, which has cups on it with the names of the colors. So like this cup here was dipped in espresso, and then it was dipped in espresso again right here. So you can see the difference between the two layers and the single layer of glaze. Um, this one here was dipped in white and then it was dipped in cobalt blue. So all of it was white and then just the top part was turned over and dipped into the cobalt blue. So that's the two colors here. So you can look at our chart and look for different colors that you want to um, dip your project into and then I'll be demonstrating um, how to do that. Okay, with your bisqueware um, that you want to glaze, what you're going to want to do is make sure that there's no clay chunks in there. Make sure that your hands are clean and free of lotion. And oftentimes I'll take a sponge and just kind of wipe out the inside. You don't want it to be wet. You're just kind of cleaning off the surface so that you have a really clean and dust free pot for glazing. All right, now I'm ready to go. Okay, once you have decided what color that you want to use, you're going to find it in the buckets. And you can see on the outside here, it says iron red. So I have it labeled. Um, but when you open the bucket, you'll notice that there's water on top. Um, so you have to spend quite a bit of time stirring that glaze. Move it just a little bit here. And so what I'm going to do now is take the paddle and I'm gonna scrape it on the bottom and you can see how kind of gunky it is. So you have to take a lot of time, we call it rowing the glaze, because you're gonna scrape it along the bottom and lift that bottom stuff up while the paddle rests on the side of the bucket. So I'm rowing the glaze. And you wanna do that until it changes consistency. So you wanna do that until there's no chunks in there. And it now looks like a melted milkshake or I kind of think it looks like heavy cream, but it's now thick. And you have to do that every time you come up to a bucket because there's metals in here that are used to color the glazes, uh, which we discussed and those metals start settling out immediately the minute you stop stirring that glaze. So even if it looks like someone else stirred the glaze, you need to come in and stir it right before you're gonna dip your project in. Okay, I have these tongs here and um, you're welcome to use these for your first dip. They do make little tiny marks, but they're, they're not, those marks aren't very big. And for the most part, the glaze will seal itself. So you're gonna put, these are channel lock tongs. So depending on the size of your pot and how you wanna grab it, you can adjust these. But I'm going to grab my project and they're not spring activated. So you can practice picking it up and holding it um, and um, making sure that you can dip it into the glaze. So I'm gonna take my project now sideways, dip it into the glaze, 
and then as I take it out, I'm pouring it out and I'm kind of shaking it off. I usually give it a couple little turns and then I'm going to set it down and let it dry. Okay, I have my cup here that I just glazed, but there's glaze on the bottom and we can't fire it with glaze touching the shelf or it's gonna melt onto there. So I have these bins here that have a rug in the bottom and a little bit of water. So I'm gonna take my cup and I'm going to just go in a circular motion And I'm not gonna tip it over, I'm gonna let it dry so that water doesn't drip down. Um, and that takes the glaze off the bottom. Now this can get dirty if you used white um, uh, as your glaze and someone else used brown. Sometimes you can get a little ring around it. So the other way that you can do it is take a, a sponge that's been dipped in water and rinsed out and you can take and just wipe the glaze off the part that touches. Sometimes I do both because I would like your glaze to be cleaned off about a eighth of an inch up off the side so that we don't run into any glaze running if you dipped it in too many times or the glaze was a little thick. Okay, so now if I want another color on there, I would dip it in from the top down going this way into the bucket so that the two colors would be near the top and the single color would be here. And that's just so that it doesn't run down onto the pot. You can dip it as far as you want, um, but if you go all the way to the bottom, sometimes if you have two coats down here, it can run onto the pot and onto the kiln shelf, run off the pot and onto the kiln shelf. So we have a lot of glazes for you to choose from. So the wall is full of different colors of glazes, and that's really a personal choice on your part. I don't give certain colors better grade than others. You're gonna pick the colors that you want your project to be and the colors that you like. And so these cups are designed for you to look at them and to help you um, make up your mind about what color you would like. All right, I'm gonna finish up. Okay, now that I'm finished um, with the color that I want, I am gonna put the lid on um, and make sure that I've cleaned up any messes that I've made. And we'll talk about cleaning up the rest of the stuff. So I've made a little bit of a mess here and I'm going to take my sponge and clean up the table just real quickly and keep rinsing out that sponge. I'm gonna make sure don't forget to clean off the bottom. Again, don't tip it over right away because it can drip onto your pot. Then I'm gonna take my tongs that I used and I'm gonna clean those off. You also can do this at the sink and put them back in the bin. And make sure I haven't forgotten anything. And then I'm gonna set this over on the cart to be fired. Okay, here's our kiln with um, some bisqueware or some greenware in it actually, but I just wanted to show you the kiln. And like I said, I stack them up, fire them, and they'll come out when they're ready. <laughs>